I have always wanted a reverse shell handler, something that could manage and maintain multiple targets or victims that it has connecting back to it, being able to jump in and out of each session or shell that I wanna be able to interact with and be able to pull in and collect as many as possible. Something like a command and control framework, right? Something like a C2 server or an HQ or headquarters where I could work out of, and not only me, but other operators or other peers or colleagues in sort of this like multiplayer hacking framework. And that is exactly what Villain, the latest tool from Telemachus is all about. And it is super duper slick and I wanna dive in and show it to you in this video. But before we do, let's take a quick word from today's sponsor, where honestly, you might be able to get to use Villain and do some super cool stuff. Roll the clip. Hack the Box is happy to announce and introduce their latest training path and certification, the Certified Penetration Testing Specialist, or CPTS. CPTS is a hands-on certification that tests your skills in penetration testing, ethical hacking, compromising endpoints, and delivering a professional commercial grade report. It's not just pulling public exploits off the shelf or finding typical CVEs. CPTS puts you in the driver's seat to hunt down security issues, prove your merit, and chain together multiple vulnerabilities to demonstrate the maximum impact of an exploit. You'll exploit web applications for initial access and pivot it to move laterally through an active directory domain, escalate your privileges, and perform post-exploitation on both Windows and Linux targets. Take the exam and write a professional pen testing report to prove you have what it takes to help organizations take action and remediate vulnerabilities. Get credentialed as a Hack the Box Certified Penetration Testing Specialist and demonstrate your security expertise. Jump into the action by cruising through the Penetration Tester job role path on Hack the Box Academy. Grab an exam voucher, take the test, and earn your CPTS that never expires. You can dive in right now with my link below in the video description. Huge thanks to Hack the Box for sponsoring this video. So here I am on my Kali Linux virtual machine, and I want to show you Villain from Telemachus. And forgive me, I'm sorry, my friend, I'm sure I butcher your name. Uh, you do it in the right way, but check it out. Villain is a Windows and Linux backdoor generator and multi-session handler that allows users to connect with sibling servers or other machines running Villain to share their backdoor sessions, handy for working as a team. And that's exactly what it gets into in the readme here on their GitHub. And you can, of course, find this online. And it explains that the main idea behind the payloads generated by this tool are inherited from Hoax Shell, another super sweet tool that we've showcased before. One could say that Villain is an evolved, steroid-induced version of it. It does have a disclaimer, hey, this is an early release, currently being tested, and it has an incredible video presentation that hopefully I'll just try and speedrun and showcase some of the other cool stuff that Telemachus does just as well. It does, of course, have have the traditional offensive security tooling disclaimer, hey, you can be a hacker, but don't be like an illegal cyber criminal hacker. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's get into it. It's super duper slick. All it takes to install is just cloning the repository, jumping in that directory, and then installing all the requirements with pip. It says, hey, you should run this as root because it will require, hey, whatever port management shenanigans stuff that it does, eh, but we'll bear with it here. Now note, I am a little bit, uh, I would love to see this thing managed with poetry or whatever, but hey, I'm not going to complain too much. And then you just fire this thing up. You can customize it as you would like with some certificates if you want to get some of that sweet HTTPS SSL shenanigans or different ports that it will listen on or key files and other things that you might be able to explore here. Uh, and I will actually cruise down down through to showcase how that HTTPS beacon-like reverse shell covers. This is exactly what hoax shell displays in its own readme, but it's got some super cool stuff. Anyway, forgive me for rambling. Let me go ahead and clone this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up a terminal and then I'll go ahead and git clone this bad boy here. Then I'll go ahead and pull down the repository and I will CD to change directory into that. And now we can go ahead and use pip 
to install tac r denote the requirements.txt file, and that will pull this all down. Again, hey, you might want to do this inside of a virtual environment. You can use Python 3, tac m, venv, env to create that thing. Or hey, I don't know, maybe we could get this thing ported into using Poetry for helping manage some of that. And here we go. Now we are inside the villain interactive interpreter here. You can see villain in that sweet ASCII art put together by Telemachus. And we've got some info. The core server is listening on all interfaces on port 65,000 one, and the hoax shell engine is listening on all interfaces on port 8080. Now you could go ahead and simply run help to see what you might be able to do here. And of course, you've got the help command. You can connect to other sibling servers that we'll play with in just a moment. You can generate backdoor payloads that you'll just use as your reverse shell syntax, and then check out what siblings you might already have been connected to, or sessions for active shells that you have. And you can execute commands into those sessions, uh, invoke an interactive shell for each of those sessions, and then do some other shenanigans to either remove a session or set some quick aliases and nicknames for commands, whatever you might be interested in. But what I wanna do is generate a payload. I'm gonna need some arguments here and I'm curious, can I go ahead and actually use help on generate? Oh, if I can type and see what we might be able to do here. Generate backdoor payload. If you start villain with SSL, the generated payloads will be adjusted accordingly. For Windows, you can generate the operating system as an argument set to Windows. Same thing for Linux, OS equals Linux. And then the L host could either be your IP address or your interface. You could execute this and put it out to a file, or you might be able to specify any domains that you wanna use and whether or not you wanna obfuscate, encode, or allow PowerShell payloads that might run under constrained language mode. That's kind of slick. Or if you're rocking this on Linux, you don't readily have that obfuscation, but it will still work just as well. So, hey, let's go ahead and try this thing. I will go ahead and use generate with OS being Linux, and I'll set my L host to my ETH zero. We'll go ahead and correct that typo there. And let's see what I've generated here. Check it out. Now we have a backdoor payload triggering nohup to run something in the background with some command substitution denoting an identifier or unique ID for this session. And then it's grabbing, hey, the host name. It's pulling stuff down with that hoax shell server that's listening in the background using some, hey, authorization keys to keep track of what this session might be, yada, yada, yada. I'm cool with it. I'm ready to hit the I believe button, but let's fire this thing off. It is already copied to the clipboard, which I love to see. Now, if I go ahead and move out of this virtual machine, I'm curious, can I go put it into an target virtual machine? I do have a new Ubuntu box spinning up and ready for me. So let me see. This is running on IP address 192.168.111.131. If I paste this in, it copied the copy to clipboard text. That might be my bad. I probably right clicked it. Uh, but let me grab this. Now, if I paste this in, I'll check it out. That started and invoked in the background and checking back into villain, we do have a backdoor session established on that target. Now I could go ahead and run sessions to see what sessions I have available to me. And there it is. There is my Linux session on my Ubuntu virtual machine owned by me and it is an active session. I could of course interact with that session ID if I try to use shell and if I tab complete, uh, it doesn't come through for me until I hit that first letter. I do need to denote, hey, B is what that session ID would start with. Then I can tab complete that. I dig it and check it out. Here I am in this reverse shell, again, put together with hoax shell in the background. It is not a full PTY. It is not a full, hey, pseudo terminal interactive thing. So if you try to run commands that prompt some interactive shell, like opening Nano or Vim or whatever text editor that you want to be part of the Holy Wars with, it will hang the reverse shell because it's just running those commands back and forth, right? If I run who am I, you can see that I'm John. If I wanted to check out what processes are running, I could do that. If I wanted to go ahead and check out what my IP address is, you can get this output. And that works great. We are on that machine. Can I cat, et cetera, release? Yeah, we are on that Ubuntu box. And that's just it, it's a reverse shell. Now, that was fine and handy. I'm gonna hit Control C to get back to the villain prompt. And what is really the interest in this though? Well, for one thing, it is multiplayer. And that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier. And that, you know what? If there are other operators that you wanna hang out with you, let me fire up a wholly separate 
uh, Kali Linux instance. I'll move into the villain directory that I have here. I'll go ahead and sudo install this stuff. There we go. That has everything installed now. Let me sudo Python 3 villain. We can fire this thing up. And now note that this has no sessions, correct? It also has no siblings, but this is separate from the other Kali control that I set up over here. So noting that this thing is running on 65001 on the current IP address that I have here, I could connect to the other server and be able to share shells and sessions with it. That's super duper cool. Let me show you this. Uh, let's see. My current IP address on this machine is what now? IPAS138, uh, okay? So let me go ahead and bring this into the other machine and I will connect to that IP address. And I've suddenly killed this thing. Connect 192.168.111.138 on 65001. How does this look? Sending a request to connect. If I pivot back over to that other operator here, you'll get a request to connect from that other operator. You'll need sort of like a one-time pad, quick time-based thing to allow the connection, which is kind of nice. Hey, you don't want just random things jumping into your server here. But it says you've got 10 seconds to connect and actually allow that a connection. But uh, if I timed out after those 10 seconds, it didn't really work for me. Uh, and it'll just automatically deny that. Let me do that one more time. And that way we'll actually go ahead and accept it. Let's go ahead and type in 87045. And now we are synchronized with that other server. So checking that out, we've got now one additional shell session and we could go ahead and view that. If I were to check out the sessions that I have, there is the original shell that I received on the first operating host. Now I could check out the siblings, which are the connected servers, and it'll note, hey, this is the other villain HQ. This is the other instance that is working and doing great stuff with it. Now, this is kind of slick. I've got friends here that I'm working with and moving in and out of these different operating HQs, we could do more damage. Now I've shown a Linux reverse shell, but the cool stuff is jumping in with a Windows reverse shell. Now, let me go ahead and generate with OS equals Windows, L host equals ETH zero, and check it out. This is the PowerShell syntax that is generated from hoax shell. Now you could do different things with this, remember? You could supply other arguments like obfuscate, and then you'll get a obfuscated payload with random O oh, single quotes to create some strings, uppercase and lowercase letters, some occasional backticks or regular expressions trying to evade static, regular signature-based detection. And it works pretty well. It just slips by Defender, not gonna lie. If you were to do this over and over and over again, you'll notice you get a different obfuscated payload every single time. Let me try and do this with encode. Look at that, now you've got that base64 encoding. And I think we wanted, what, constraint language? Is that what that was? Yeah. Okay, so now you've got some other super slick way to uh, parse that out. I wanna make sure I'm not typing that wrong, am I? Oh, I think I might be. Uh, let me go ahead and help generate. Is it constrained? Constraint mode. Ah, okay, cool. So let me run that one more time. You can hit the up arrow to get back to everything that you're working on. And now you've got another super slick way to pull things in and out. Uh, let me go ahead and get an obfuscated rendition and I'll go slap this in to one of my Windows 11 victims. Check it out. This is my Windows 11 box running on 111129. Defender is on with everything enabled. And let me just fire this off. I'll paste this in here. Uh, I think I might've copy and pasted again that uh, IP address that was highlighted. So let me grab this and paste, slap that in. Now this shell is gonna remain alive for the moment. That's a-okay. Jumping back in. Do I have anything calling back to me yet? Mm, maybe not. Is it able to reach that host? Or did it get a connection or did Defender whine? Let's go check it out. No, no issues. Oh, came through. Okay, I was just a little too impatient. So now check it out. Let's check out our sessions. And there is my device running a Windows installation here on that IP address. I can do the very, very same with the 
other virtual machine that I have set up. Now note, this owner is the self being the second instance of my villain HQ for my multiplayer perspective. I'm basically running as the second player right now. First player's way over here. You can see that it still sees that session owned by the other operator. If I were to check out the sessions here, note that the Ubuntu VM is my own, while the Windows one is related to that other operator. Super duper slick. Again, if you wanted to interact with these, you certainly could. We can just go ahead and grab that ID for the other shell and check it out. I can go ahead and run who am I. It just passes these tasks to it. I could go ahead and run net user. And if I want to do something a little bit more uh, intensive, right, I could go ahead and run system info. Very, very, very slick. Let's see if we could control C out of that. And uh, ooh, did one of those die? Maybe, maybe it took too long. Oh no, it just came through. Took a little bit and it was uh, trying to track whether or not it got something. I was pretty slick. I'd never seen it do that before. Okay, uh, let's generate one more. OS equals Windows, L host equals ETH zero. Let's go ahead and just leave this as a regular syntax here. I'll go put this in my other Windows operating system. Again, we've got the, oh, it's whining about like OneDrive. No, get out of here. Defender is cruising, but we could go ahead and paste this in. <laughs> Some weird slowness. Piven back into our villain HQ. We should see this call home in just a moment. Again, maybe I've just been a little bit too patient and network connectivity is being slow for me. There it is. Check it out. We've got our sessions, and again, we can work with that. There are other commands, as you've seen. You could just go ahead and execute even files on your own local instance, like from your Kali virtual machine or come your attacking host. You could go ahead and just put power up or put, I don't know, post exploitation utilities or anything that you want to run on the target through your host and attacking machine. Telemachus showcases that in his video, and I do want to try and redirect some folks to that video because he does a fantastic job showcasing it. And this, of course, is his baby. This is thing that he put together, and all the credit and kudos goes to him. I just think it's phenomenal. I've always wanted something that can handle working through all of these multiple connections and collecting new victims and targets as you're working through an operation. And you could do that with like Metasploit. You could do that with like another C2 framework. But this is just slim. It's just nimble. It's just keeping track of the access that you have and that's pretty slick with that i hope that was a pretty cool pretty slick nice little demonstration of villain this backdoor reverse shell generator maintainer and manager of multiple connections that is multiplayer not just you but for your other operators friends teammates and others now trust me i think this is going to be pretty awesome potentially on some engagements let me add a disclaimer here let me add a note look it's one thing to showcase a reverse shell that is undetected by Microsoft Defender or other antivirus. I know, and folks will kind of comment on this, look, it's a TCP connection. It, there's nothing inherently malicious about whatever packets coming back and forth trying to get some reverse shell done. It really depends on what you do after you have a shell that could be caught by an EDR solution or by an antivirus but it is still access. It is still getting hands on keyboard and operating on the potential target. What you do next to set off the alarm bells and the whistles and scream and shout and stuff, eh, totally depends on your work and your OPSEC as an operator. At its core, I think it's still kind of slick just to land that shell and then do what you might further from that. Anyway, enough of me rambling, I'm super sorry. Please, 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 Go give some love to Telemachus. Go give some love to all of his work. He's been doing some really, really cool projects and cranking out some incredible tools. I want to showcase some more of them between Hoax Shell and now Villain. And I think there's some other sweet stuff like WWW and he's even got some like XSS or cross-site scripting stuff. Way too, way too good stuff. Uh, so I hope we can dive into that. But I hope you get to play with it and you get to do it just as well as part of some of the sweet stuff you might be cruising through in Hack the Box especially for that Hack the Box Academy, especially for CPTS, the Certified Penetration Testing Specialist. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a sponsor for this video. And with that, I think I'm done rambling and yelling at my computer screen. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. Quick outro, hey, support, Patreon, PayPal, whatever stuff is in the description. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, everybody.